What is up everybody and welcome to another Dueling Grounds episode number 5 and we were so excited about decks being playable now that we had to give it another shot, right Tom? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah there's, there's so much on the table now so we gotta do this man. Yeah, so today we're going to be covering one of the, probably like the biggest, uh, the saddest decks, uh, I guess, during the land tax, um, should we say, Reign of Terror. It, it, that's, that's inaccurate enough, probably. Um, <laughs> so we're going to be talking about Pit Rack, which is what you're going to be playing today, right? Yeah, so uh, Pit Rack. I'm going to give the credit here to Alvaro Galindo and uh, even Sven Lutz. They are both avid uh, Pit Rack players. Not really my style, but it is a lot of fun to play. Couldn't see much play when land tax was legal, but now is the time. I think black really is the big winner, though, with land tax being banned. So um, decks like this can definitely surface again. Uh, might not be the best like mono black deck. I think zombies might have like that spot held, but uh, we shall see. But let me go over the mana base. So I just made a few changes to what uh, Alvaro and Sven had together. So um, I have two Cabal Pit, nice utility land, four Mishra's Factory. Um, helps you get in there when get in there when you're under a bottomless pit. Got some swamps, wastelands to interact, and then uh, one Frexian Tower. So this one is because of the addition of Mind Slicer. So um, you can stack Mind Slicer right away to make each player discard their hand when Mind Slicer dies. Um, it also gets atta it attacks pretty well too as a four three. Probably can't play more than two. Say so don't sleep on this card. This card can just win a game um, on its own if unchecked. Um, and then we got hand disruption. So four Cabal Therapy, four Duress. Also, Therapy has a nice synergy with Mind Slicer. Dark Ritual is mainly there because you want turn one bottomless pit and get like, your game plan going quickly. We also got Funeral Charm. Funeral Charm is not a great card, but it does what this deck wants to do. Um, it also has some uh, added utility also of hit it, hitting like the Wirewood Symbiotes or your Goblin Lackeys. Um, but mainly you just want to end of turn or, you know, or whenever hit them to discard a card. Um, Innocent Blood is like the only removal just for like problematic permanence, um, like, stif like Dreadnought and things like that. But the deck doesn't really need to run too much removal. And then two Curse Scrolls, backup win conditions. And then the main win con, along with Bottomless Pit, is the Rack. So the whole deck uh, is centered around the Rack. Get your opponent's uh, hand empty, and then um, you know the Rack will, will do the job and, and win you the game. And moving on to the sideboard. So uh, one Coffin Purge, and then two Withered Wretch for the Graveyard decks. Uh, three Engineer Plague, that's just stock. Uh, for Negator, um, I think these type of decks is when you need to change gears a little bit against combo um, or control, Negator can come in. Spinning Darkness, this de this card now can definitely surface again uh, with Tax Out and Sly being one of the top decks. Uh, Mono Black will have a hard time dealing with Sly. And Spinning Darkness is Life Gain and Removal, so solid card. And then Two Powder Keg, just kind of a catch-all. Uh, sort of card against pr permits you can't answer and go wide strategy stuff like that uh, but i think the main thing with powder keg is just more hate for uh dreadnought um but fran what do you think so uh, one thing that i really like about this deck is the small number of synergies that it's, it's got going on right like you have mind slicer and plague spitter those obviously work super super well with cabal therapy uh, obviously you you mentioned the Phyrexian tower as well even innocent blood like all of these cards uh, the fact that you're sacrificing your own things is sometimes kind of an upside in a deck like this uh um the deck is entirely built around uh, bringing everybody very very much down on resources uh so that it can start taking over and like ending the game with the rack uh the skitter and scourge is a very very interesting card to me in this deck a uh, two mana three two flyer is obviously kind of very very above rate right um but you know, you cannot cast a creature spell, otherwise you have to sacrifice it. Uh, but the good thing is that, again, since you have Cabal Therapy and stuff like that, you can you can still kind of sacrifice this for value uh, before you play your Plague Speeder or Mind Slicer or whatever. So I feel like this deck has a lot of... Um, it's, it's very, very flexible in in terms of how it deals with, with stuff, even though it's, you know, monocolored and fairly straightforward and fairly linear at, at what it's attempting to do. Also, one thing that I wanted to name real quick is that Funeral Chomp is an instant, so you can actually wait until your opponent's draw step and force them, like, once you get them to no cards in hand, you can just force them to uh, to discard whatever they drew and effectively, you know, quote-unquote time walk them, which is pretty sweet. Yeah, that is awesome. And uh, Skittering Scourge, I didn't talk too much about it because I'm still on the fence myself. Uh, I think Sven said it's definitely a necessary evil kind of thing that you got to play it, but... Uh, we'll see. Uh, the only thing I would maybe switch it for like Diabolic Edicts, but or some other. But 
we're, we're gonna test and see how it goes. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I feel like uh, you can, you kind of have a shell, right? You have a shell with the rack and the bottom of the spits, and probably like you know your therapies, the rest is like those cards are probably too important for the archetype. But then from there, I feel like you have what like ten, maybe twelve uh, flex slots that you can kind of do whatever you want and take wherever you want to go. So uh, that's that's pretty sweet about this deck for sure. And now we're going to talk about a hell of a spicy one. Oh yeah. Uh, this is a deck that was uh, basically unplayable because there was other, always better Oath deck in Parfait. So I do think that now we're going to see a lot of Oath of Druids decks. Like th this card is crazy powerful, right? Banned in Legacy. Uh, it, it is even to, to this day an archetype, a real archetype in Vintage, right? So uh, like this card is no joke. And uh, obviously, this is the fun way to play to play Oath of Druids, which is to mill your deck and then put a huge Cognivore into play, a flyer that uh, has power and toughness equals to the number of Istas in your deck. Obviously, basically half of your deck is instants, so that means that your Cognivore is going to be pretty big. And then you hopefully mill in the way there. You mill the Dragon Breath, which is going to come back, uh, equipping your, your Cognivore immediately, and that's going to give it haste, and then you can swing for hopefully maybe like one turn clock, uh, ideally, but uh, probably like a two turn clock. But uh, yeah, this deck seems very, very sweet, and I really wanted to try it out. Uh, obviously, this is one shell. You could just kind of switch this Cognivore for literally any creature of your choice. You can have this via Chroma, Nishovas, etc. But the good thing is that now we're going to have room for experimentation. We can mess around with something like this, which is banned colors, right? Like blue, white, and green. Uh, you can mess around with blue, uh, blue, uh, blue, green, black as well. Uh, the banned mana base is going to be a little bit easier because you have access to Trevor's Ruins and Flooded Strands. Uh, even still, as you can see, we have 11 green sources in this in this mana base. So like this mana base is far from being uh, you know optimal or solved. This is uh, you know after a lot of tinkering and thinking, this is kind of what I could come up with because uh, you kind of do want to play this of druids as soon as you can you, you want to play it early ish and uh, you you want as many green sources as you can but obviously you're playing counter spells you're playing mana leaks uh, and you're playing like far factor fictions and whatnot so there's a, a lot of action going on uh, in, in a mostly blue deck so you want to make sure that you're hitting all of those uh, all, all of those axes right so the mana base has, uh, you know, some green sources, particularly the most interesting one being Tree Top Village. This is because obviously we are an Oath of Druids deck, so we don't want to play that many creatures. And Oath is, uh, Tree Top is a way that we can put on some pressure when needed uh, while, you know, setting up our Oath or whatever. Um, then we have, you know, Yabi Mayako, some Pain Lands, Adarker Wastes. Uh, we also have Coastal Tower. I had mo more Coastal Towers in my early lists, but... I feel like I wanted more green sources, as I was saying, that we want 11 at least, uh, ideally more, maybe something like 13, uh, but 11 is what I could make work. Um, so uh, I could only have so many ETV tapped lands, as is, we have four going on here. So um, yeah, I kind of wish I had room for more coastal towers, but I I mean, I wouldn't need to cut three tops, and I don't think that I want to be doing that. Uh, but uh, yeah, the Singleton Traverse Ruins is kind of an experiment i think that layer lands are pretty underplayed and very very powerful but you cannot really afford to play too many so just a first copy to see what's up particularly a control deck that really wants to hit its land drops is going to be um i think maybe a little bit awkward at times but you know we'll see how it goes uh, the White Splash really is for Swords with Plowshares and Disenchant out of the main deck, and the rest of the deck is blue. So after we have talked about Oath, uh, we have two copies of Crossan Reclamation. This is because we cannot play Gaia's Blessings, because otherwise our Cognivore will just, you know, die. <laughs> so um, the fact that we have access to two Crossan Reclamations means that, you know, the first one it can be milled, and then you can just cast another one, like shuffle the first one, that you know, to, to get another shot at... That stuff, you know. Uh, and then we have Factor Fiction for current advantage, AK. AK, obviously, pretty good with Oath of Druids. If you're milling your own accumulated knowledge, uh, you, you get to just draw more cards with the one you cast. Uh, we have Latinum's Legacy, which is a card that basically sees no play whatsoever. I had impulses over this, but Latinum's allowing us to shuffle back either a Cognivore Withdraw or a Dragon Breath that we draw can be kind of a big deal. Um, also, the delayed card draw, funnily enough, 
can be quite powerful against discard spell decks. <laughs> so uh, that is also pretty pretty interesting, right? Like I have two cards in hand and Eladnam's Legacy. My opponent duresses me. I like shuffle the, my other card back into the deck and then I end up and I'm going to have like three cards in my <laughs> in my hand. Uh, so that's kind of like a funny play pattern that, uh, you know, obviously in this matchup uh, is, is going to be a lot more relevant than in the average matchup, but still we'll see. And then obviously, as I said earlier, we have a bunch of uh, counter magic to round things out. Uh, the interesting thing that this deck has going on is Cunning Wish. So the main reason for this is that we can Cunning Wish for Funeral Pyre. Uh, this is a way to, uh, you know, enable all of Druids out of decks that maybe are not playing creatures or stuff like that, so that we can force uh, an Oath activation. Uh, but you kind of don't want to have this card in your main deck because it's pretty terrible. <laughs> so in order to uh, circumvent that, we have, you know, we, we have access to a couple of copies of Cunning Wish, and then uh, we can also wish for value if needed. So, you know, obviously we can wish for something like a Rear Revelation or a Disenchant, or we can even go as far as to uh, wish in for Stroke of Genius when we're trying to uh, make it into the late game. Uh, so even wishing for Absorb can be powerful in certain situations as well. Our Cyber as you can expect, has a bunch of cards that we are happy to play uh, that just end up being kind of wish targets, but I didn't want to just have a 15-card cyborg. I think that that is uh, some, you know, like a misunderstood thing about wishes. You know, as soon as you put wishes in your deck, you kind of want to, like most people kind of gravitate towards having a 15 card, you know, like instant cyborg for kind of wish or a 15 card uh, sorcerer cyborg for burning wishes or, or like a limb wish or whatever. Um, and I think that's kind of not great. Uh, you want to have powerful cards that do powerful things for what your deck is trying to achieve. Uh, like, for example, here we have Wrath of God and we have Multani Mata Sorcerer as an Oath of Druid target uh, against, you know, control decks and stuff like that. Like, this card is an absolute banger, right? Like, it just cannot be interacted with and it can uh, just end the game by itself. So I think that, uh, you know, having access to... A bunch of instants is, you know, these are just good cards that I would like to have in my sideboard. So if I had to say what my actual package is, I would say that it's just these three cards. Like, these are the only cards that would not be in my sideboard if I were not playing Cunning Wish. Everything else would be in my sideboard whether I played Cunning Wish or not. So I think that that is the approach that I like to take for, for Wish decks. And I think that that is, you know, kind of the correct way to go about things, in my opinion, at least. Uh, how do you feel about it, Tom? Yeah, I mean, it looks really good. You know, the jury is out. Uh, which deck will be the best Oath deck, right? We knew it was Parfait before, but now we don't know. This could be definitely on the right track because it, it just, it's, Bant is solid in this format because you, like you said, you got access to Swords, Disenchant, Naturalize, and you're also playing counter spells. Um, the mana is the one area where it looks good. Like, you know, I know you've been working on it. We, you know, it's got to definitely be a work in progress. It's hard to make three mana, a three, yeah, th yeah, three color mana bases work in pre modern, but it looks clean. And I also like the, um, how you explained the funeral pyre. Like, it's not a good card. Like, I've seen decks run it in the main, but they're so, it's just, it's just not a good card on its own, but it's nice in the sideboard with Wish, so you can get it when you need it. But yeah, the one thing I was going to ask you was about AK over impulse, but makes a lot of sense, right, with the Oath of Druids value. But it looks really good. Like I said, I think that this is like, you know, new format starting, new meta shape, you know, uh, shaping out. So it's, it's, I think this is the way to go. It looks really good. Yeah, looking forward to trying it out. Uh, definitely exciting that we, we get to mess around with these things now before, before it was just, oh yeah, cool. That's a straight up worse oath deck. <laughs> and now it's just, oh, oh, cool. Like that's an oath deck. I wonder like, you know, I wonder what is the shape uh, that that oath decks are gonna have from now on, and like what's gonna be the you know the quote unquote best oath deck? Because uh, like this card is messed up, right? Like this card is very very strong, and you know it can be some green white Terragedon style oath deck. It can be uh, something like this that's trying to put a Cognivor into play. It can be something that's trying to put uh, Nishobas or you know stuff like that into play. Uh, even like the the red green oath deck, I think it's uh, now is going to be you know. You're gonna have the possibility of a comeback, uh, the one with Bloodfire Colossus. So it's a, it's a new world, and I can't wait to to see what it <laughs> what's awaiting for us now. You know, absolutely. All right, uh, let's go ahead and let's play some matches. All right, we're on the play. So this hand looks pretty good, actually. We have turn to oath. We have double counter spell. Yeah, this looks pretty good. 
Uh, I think I'm gonna lead on Flooded Strand because I don't want to get owned by a Wasteland. And obviously I want to try to set up Blue Blue for turn number two. I do think that on turn two I'm going to tap out for an Oath. Because like once this thing hits play, there's a bunch of Tom's cards that are not going to be particularly useful. Okay, so play my Flooded Strand. He moved to six, by the way. There's the Duress. I imagine he's taking the Oath. Yeah, easy Oath there. Here's... A blue source, and pass the turn back. Dust Bowl is kind of an interesting draw because this is the kind of scenario where Mistress Factory would beat me down and be pretty good. Uh, that's really what I wanted to dodge there. Uh, source of Plowshares. Okay, I'm just gonna play my forest and pass the turn back. Uh, that Wasteland there is pretty, pretty devastating, I think. Skittering Scourge. Okay, that one I'm not super worried about. Factor Fiction, on the other hand, that is a banger. I really want to dodge a Wasteland here. I think I take a damage from this, because if he has another Scourge, he can't deploy it here. So if I go ahead... Oh my god, that's brutal. So if I go to go ahead and just do this on end step, that means that if he did have another Scourge, he kind of had to, you know, waste a turn. Uh, but like that second Wasteland is pretty brutal. Uh, Alright, so now if we get to resolve this Foth, we're going to be in pretty decent shape. Plague Spitter. Okay, that's fine. Uh, sure. Let's play another island because we may be able to counter something here if we need to. Oh, he's just firing off the factory. Okay, well, there we go. That is four damage coming through. I'm going to go down to nine, fetch for a couple of islands, and now I'm going to try to find a Oath of Tr Hey, there we go. I, I would not be surprised if he just splits Oath versus everything else. I think this is just a good split. Oh, he wants to put the Cognivore in my hand. That's hilarious. Yeah, I'm definitely keeping the Oath here. Stuff goes to the graveyard. Untap. Find another Oath, sure. <laughs> so here's the Oath. We're going to be able to hopefully trigger this. If he has... Hmm. I do wonder if he has a way to to sack his own Plague Spitter. I do wonder if I counter that. So he can swing with everything. Put me down to four. Yeah, I think if he has, I think if he has um, an innocent blood, I probably will have to counter it, which is really awkward. Oh wow, funeral funeral charm. So I'm gonna take six down to two. Woof. That that means I take one from the plague spitter. Yeah, I think I let that go. So we go down to two, and we just hope that we get kind of lucky. Uh, I think I just countered the dark ritual here. So now he just doesn't have enough mana to do anything else. Uh, we're going to trigger my Oath of Druids, and we're going to say yes, and we are going to have a pretty big boy. Any order is fine. Oh yeah, yeah, we got a 20-20 here. Play my land, pass the turn. So we go down to one. Oof. <laughs> I think we lose to... Oh man, like the fact that we didn't mill... Yeah, Innocent Blood, we, we just have to counter. And then, yeah... I mean, he can just fire off. He can just fire off the factory, and I actually can't fetch. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go out on my terms here. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Um, all right, so that that's Blake Spitter. That Blake Spitter did did some pretty serious work there. So I think I want to bring in the extra disenchant. I think Oath is probably fine. I don't think I care for Wrath of God. I think I want Absorb to be in my deck to maybe play around uh, to play around what's his name a little bit better to play around um, Cabal Therapy. Now, if we had found the Dragon Breath, it's pretty funny how we would have actually won that game. That's hilarious. But yeah, I think that game was very very much about that second wasteland. I feel like that was the the, the real game changer. What do I, what do I don't like? Manalik is effectively a better counter spell, I think, because I don't think that we're going to be getting to a point where he's going to be able to cast those. And I think Source of Pleasures is good. Maybe Latinum's Legacy can go? Ah, uh, that can't be it. Like, Latinum's Legacy seems fine. Like, it's not actual card advantage, it's just cycling, but just being able to shuffle away a Cognivore or stuff like that seems, seems pretty relevant. Yeah, maybe I just leave the Absorb in the sideboard. Alright, game number two. Yeah, this hand looks decent. Uh, I don't love the cross from Reclamation, but I also don't want to be... Si I, I just don't want to be um, just mulliganing too hard against a deck like Pithrak. We also have our best land in Coastal Tower, so turn one Coastal Tower is just 
just unfair, you know? It's perfect mana. It's basically a Tundra that enters Daft. Like, that's such an easy cost to pay for a Tundra, right? He moves to three? Wow, that's brutal. All right, there we go. The rest is definitely going to take the Oath here. Play Abimaya Coast past the turn. I'm probably not going to... Oh, don't come all therapy me here, bro. Oh, Curse Scroll is fine. Latinam's Legacy, sick. That's a good card to draw there. All right, so he found a factory. Okay, so he did... He does know about the source to Plowshares, so I'm going to... I'm going to, like, Latinam's here, and I'm going to shuffle one of these source to Plowshares, so he's only going to be taking a one from one, a one for one for, from this therapy. But yeah, he's obviously going to name the card that he knows about, which is the source to Plowshares. I guess he also knows about the Reclamation, but he doesn't care about this card at all. So we draw from Latinam's. And that's an accumulated knowledge. Okay. I guess I main phase this, because I may find an oath. Found the basic forest, which is whatever. I don't think, unless he casts uh, a duress or something like that, I don't think I'm supposed to cast Curse from Reclamation. It just being in my hand rep represents something that I get to discard to, uh, like, Funeral Charm or whatever. So he gets in there with the factory. That's a good draw. It's a very good draw. Uh, actually, I want to leave blue blue open in case I find counter spell. Yikes! Sure, pass the turn back. It's a lot of lands. Yeah, the rest is fine. If he wants to take the reclamation, I mean, I probably should have cast it instead so I can shuffle back my oath. But I honestly, I'm not even sure that oath does too much here. <laughs> That's a funny top deck. All right, pass the turn. I mean, we make it to a point where I can just hard cast this bad boy. That's gonna be only two turns from now. Decent chant. Okay, so pass the turn. I guess he can activate Curse Scroll here. That's fine. I'm gonna take a shock to the face. He reveals Funeral Charm. Okay, so he suits up the factory, which is this is obviously great for me because I just get to disenchant it. So we disenchant there, and we're looking pretty good here. I think. I'm gonna hard cast. <laughs> just hard cast my Cognivore here. No big deal. Don't mind me. Just playing eight mana six sixes. <laughs> I could have also waited for like two turns to play around, just being able to discard, uh, to protect this. Oh, this is gonna curse scroll me for two. Okay, so no, no innocent blood. We now have perfect information. He has a funeral charm in his hand. All right, so he just passes the turn and now we top the cunning wish. So I think we are right now in a very, very good spot because whenever we want, we can either prohibit something or we can just cunning wish for absorb or counter spell. So target player discards a card, that's fine. I'm just going to discard Prohibit. Because uh, I can just wish for Stroke of Genius as well. So I'm just going to end step, wish, say yes, and I'm just going to find Stroke of Genius. And I'm going to get to Stroke for very, very healthy amount here. So getting there for 9, Cognivore doing, doing its thing. So I'm delaying the Stroke because I don't know still what I want to the amount that I want to be doing this for because I may need to find uh, to like I may need to draw into a counter spell and if that's the case I want to just stroke for x minus two but if he doesn't do anything that I need to to counter there I can just stroke for the four all right on to game number three he moved to three though so to be honest I'm not particularly excited about how that game went <laughs> if I'm being honest yeah I think I leave the naturalize in the sideboard and I just, I think I, I think I like this setup. I'm just going to submit again. Move on to game number three. This hand seems reasonable. I think I'm going to keep it. The one Cognivore obviously sucks. It's good against Funeral Charm, but turn one rack. Okay, that's not that big of a deal for now. So we're going to play a basic planes and pass the turn. Once again, the fact that I drew a second Source of Plowshares is kind of brutal in the face of the Cabal Therapy deck. So I imagine he duresses Manalik here. And then just therapies my source of pleasures, which is absolutely devastating. Okay. No. <laughs> no. No, deck. You're, you're killing me here, deck. <laughs> uh, funeral charm. Yes, I'm going to discard this source of pleasures real quick. Thank you very much. <laughs> Cabal pit. Okay. So, island, AK, into another AK. Okay, so that's not terrible. So now... He's going to stack triggers. I'm going to discard. Oh, this discards at random? Oh my god. This is so much better than I thought it was. I thought it just 
you chose a card to discard. Discarding at random is so much better. Ugh, oh my god. Alright, AK, save me, please. It's a bunch of lands. Can I draw more accumulated knowledge, just please? Okay, Cognivore down. Oof, this is a race. Alright, <laughs> yes! Alright, deck, thank you now. <laughs> so we need to find the Naturalize. If I do manage to find the Naturalize, I'm going to be very, very happy with my position here. Funeral Charm. Yeah, I think I'm going to discard Source of Plowshares here. Oath. Alright, alright, alright. Can we do this? Counterspell is gone. Green, play Oath, and play Coastal Tower. So now the rack is finally going to start to deal some damage. Mistress Factory. So we, we need to find Cunning Wish or Naturalize, I think. Yeah, I, I think I passed the turn. Man, what a what a close game three. So Oath means that he actually cannot um he cannot play any creatures, but he can still beat me down with a factory. So this is definitely a clock. This is definitely, definitely a clock. I wanna draw factor fictions, like those are the kind of cards that I want. That's that also plays. Okay. So I'm gonna draw four right now. Oh no. <laughs> Oh no, uh, well that's all my accumulated knowledge, um, I think I want to play one more land, let's, ma let's make that the Flooded Strand, pass it. We have one more island to go fetch, but at least uh, having that uh, that AK draw uh, makes the, pit ra the rack a lot worse, duress. So I'm gonna take the Dragon Breath, which is act actually pretty good for me. So now we find the Cognivore, like my opponent cannot trigger this oath, otherwise it, they're just guaranteed to die. So let's fetch for the last island, because it would be terrible if I drew it. And now, bottomless pit is gonna go at it, but oh, that's a pretty good draw. All right, so now we're gonna take one from the bottomless pit. Oh, Cabal Pit is devastating here. Actually, it doesn't mean, it means that I cannot use the, the Treetop Village to block. Woof, that's really good for him. So I need to find Factor Fiction, that kind of stuff. Pass the turn back. So he can still attack with this factory because of the Cabal Pit. But I also think that I probably... I think that I probably have to force the issue because he can draw into a Wasteland. And also if he uses Cabal Therapy to kill my Treetop, that means that he's not using Cabal Therapy for preventing me to wish for Funeral Pyre. It's kind of funny how I drew all accumulated knowledge, but it's still not enough to, to slow down the bottomless pit because I didn't find the Naturalize. I do think this is a good attack from him, uh, but I'm, I'm gonna go for it anyways. So block there. He's gonna Cabal Pit, but I just have to I just have to take that. It's just how it goes, unfortunately. Latinum's Legacy. Okay, so past the turn. I'm gonna be taking two. Yeah. So now on my end step, I get to Latinum's put back the oath, untap. Oh. So we're going to take the full three here. I thought that this would resolve the other way around. Well, that's really bad for me, obviously. <sighs> Am I just dead? I think I'm just dead here. Man, still no naturalize for this, huh? Yeah, so I do get to plow the factory, but I'm still dead to the rack. Man, that was rough. That was rough. I think at any point, if I find a cunning wish, I may be in okay shape. But obviously, you know, bottomless pit did, did a lot of work there. Uh, that was fun. That was a fun matchup. We, we were not sure how that one was going to go, so now we know. <laughs> All right, dude, you finally got there, man. It took you five episodes, and you finally <laughs> you got that match. Pete Rack, the hey, real hey. deal, huh? Not bad. One four yet. I'm just going to play Pit Rack against you every time. But... <laughs> <laughs> so your kryptonite is against Pit Rack, and you casting AKs and just drawing lands. Yeah. Just I gotta open. Dude, what, what, my deck, it, it was really funny because, like, the dealer had me, you know? Like, I, I'm just, like, top decking AK into AK, and then every single, like, I'm drawing four, and it was, like, three lands and a dead plow. And it was just like, damn it. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. After the fourth AK, I was like, damn, like, okay, fourth AK and 20 cards, that's crazy. I was like, there's no way I'm going to be able to get this. Then when I direct, I was like, all right, I got to dress to see what's up. All lands, I was like, ah, oh, I, mean, I don't think he's one of this game. <laughs> that kind of, <laughs> that was just horrible luck. Yeah, that, that was really funny. But, I mean, Bottomless Pit did some serious work, man. Like, it's really funny because I always thought that it was just like, oh, your opponent just discards a card, which I was like, I don't know. If that's not even good. And then it didn't give me the choice. I just discarded immediately. I'm like, oh, wow, it's at random? Oh, my God, this card is so much better than I thought it was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think, I think Pit Rack's biggest, uh, the thing it has going for it is the Wasteland and Bottomless Pit. Yeah, no, for sure. You like, uh, that... Uh, the the actual 
even the, the actual cabal tip, uh, cabal pit right right there yeah. was such a big deal, right? Like imagine if yeah. I just get to use the treetop to, to block your factory there and I kind of just stabilize at that point, right? So it's it's pretty wild how it has so many moving pieces, right? Like that deck has so many moving pieces that are so innocuous, <laughs> but like the fact that you're playing a, mono, a monocolor deck allows you to use uh, all of these utility lands that actually do some very real work. Absolutely, yeah. I think uh, Cabal Pit's definitely good. Like it's just, it's a good one, you know. But it's it's got to be like in a mono black aggressive deck. It just makes sense. And uh, yeah, most most I see a lot of lists not running it. I'm surprised because you fill your graveyard so fast. Mm -hmm. You know, you all your you know it's like one drop dot deck. Like you know you you're gonna you want to discard and it's just I don't know. I'm I'm honestly kind of playing running more because the entire time I was like I wish I had a Cabal Pit each time. Even the one situation where I didn't know if I was going to cast my Plague Spitter or not, and I just held on to it because I was like, all right, it's not that good. I need a Cabal Pit for your tree top so I can keep attacking with my factory. Mm -hmm. I considered, I was like, okay, even Cabal Pit hitting my Plague Spitter is like, you know, emptying my hand and hitting you for one. Yeah, exactly. It's like so much, so much little, you know, small little plays that you can make uh, over there. So, uh, yeah, it's it's a very cool deck. I'm very, very happy that it's now back to being playable because otherwise your opponent would just like turn one land tax and you're just... <laughs> the game ended immediately, right? Uh, but like the fact that that is not policing the format anymore. Now we get to you know play games like those over there, right? Like the fact that I was able to resolve or for accumulating knowledge and still like not be able to keep up with the bottomless pit, uh, like that that was very impressive. That was very very impressive and super telling. And I learned that I should have also Latinum's legacy on my own turn because the way that triggers stack. It actually uh, puts, it, oh, because I was drawing on my turn, it actually stacked them in the worst possible way for me. <laughs> yeah. The Apnap thing, right? So, yeah, it's important. I didn't, I didn't even think about it either until this triggers run on the stack. And I was like, oh, man. I was like, it's... I, for for whatever reason, I thought it was the other way around. You know, like the, 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 the yeah. Latinum tr uh, trigger would, would yeah, go on player, the stack last. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, I, nope. I didn't see that coming either. Um, exactly. Live and you learn, I guess. Yeah, it's funny that beforehand you were like, oh man, I just feel like this matchup looks like I'm going to hard cast a Cognivore. Yeah. And then you did. Yeah. <laughs> he, knew, he, knew, he knew, he knew. Exactly. You're like eight mana, five, five flyer. Oof, easy game. The, the return of Broodstar, you know? Like... <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's what it reminds me of. It's, it's funny though, in like pre modern, like you doing that is not out of the ordinary in some situations. So. Yeah. Because your opponent's in a situation where. And like we saw Lanny in the PSS just hard cast a chroma, right? Because once a node hits play, it's just like, well, I mean, my, your opponent can't play creatures anymore. So the game just goes on forever because they can't pressure you. And you literally just have eight lands into play at some point. And you're just like, well, I mean, here's an 8-8, eight, eight, you know, like whatever. <laughs> <laughs> cool stuff. Cool stuff, man. Uh, all right. So hopefully, folks, you enjoyed it. Uh, we will definitely be seeing you soon enough because this new Primolan format is awesome. <laughs> looking forward to more. Thank you for watching. Any final shout outs, Tom? No, that's it. I just, I'm looking forward to this and people should be pumped up because, it's, it's, again, it's it's exciting to look at all the things that land tax being banned opened up. So, yeah, let's do it. Yep. Have a good one, folks. Take care. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.